Hello everybody, welcome back to my television review series. Today we'll be discussing The Bridge Season 2. You know how we do it on this one, I believe this is my 100th one, so glad to say I've made absolutely no professional traction on anything I've done in my life, as always. But I'll be giving you overall impressions and grade. If you've not seen the show based or not based on my recommendation or not recommendation, you're going to shut off the video. There will be plot synopsis and character development. And similar major themes, almost certainly not. So this was, again, originally produced by FX. It's drama. It's got two seasons. There's another show called The Bridge, but this one is with the... What is his name? Where is the cast list? The one with Damian Bichir and Diane, Diane Kruger. That one. But regardless, we have, again, originally produced by FX, hosted on Hulu. But I kind of powered through the end because it said it's expiring in seven days. So by the time I'm sure anyone watches this, it'll probably go on Hulu anymore. But that's where I watched it. Again, we have the overview. When an American judge known for anti-immigration views found dead on the bridge connecting El Paso, Texas with Juarez, Mexico, authorities from both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border must work together to catch the perp, a serial killer who is operating in both countries. Detective Sonia Cross of the El Paso Police Department works with Chihuahua State Police Detective Marco Ruiz, who knows about the slippery politics of Mex Mexican law enforcement. Ruiz, whatever it takes approach doesn't sit well with Cross, was Asperger's syndrome and by the book attitude when it comes to the job. But the two put their differences aside and solve a string of murders on the border, which is already infected with issues that include illegal immigration, drug trafficking, violence, and prostitution. Phew, it's a long one. But, Overall, you know, I think season one I gave either a B or a B plus. I really like the um, the antagonist of David Tate. I thought he made for a good criminal, and I do not like the characterization of Sonya Croft. I just didn't make it convincing. The as Burgers aspect, um, but honestly, again, none of the characters are really really strong. Again, I did like David Tate as a um, as a criminal or as the the serial killer guy. That was all season one, and the only really characterization I thought were fun or entertaining was Ray who's kind of like minor role in Daniel Fry, who plays the reporter, were the characterizations that I found fun or entertaining. Sonya Cross was a little off-putting, everybody else was just alright, and, and like, okay, not, not good, not bad. But overall, for season two, I thought the plot was rather slow. Again, this is a, an 88% of Rotten Tomatoes, 7.6 out of 10 on IMBD, 79% on Google. But, I might just say, like I said, the David Tate character was good, um... I thought, the, I thought the plot development was rather slow or just trite, or I've seen it a thousand times for season two. So I'm going to give season two a flat C for just kind of devolves into your typical, you know, fictional, fictional drug lord. You, basically, it's just cops and robbers. I've seen, you know, the, the cartel uh, presentation and writing a thousand different times, as opposed to, like, Narcos, where it at least has some historical backing, where anything with history always gets, always gets buoyed up or boosted up. But this one, I just thought it was a, the plot was a little... W w kind of fell off after after the, the strong characterization of David Tate for the season one. So if you've not watched it, that's my recommendation. See, it just didn't do much for me. It's your standard type of cartel show, um, and that's really it. So if you've not seen it, would like to or not like to, based off what I've just said, you want to shut the video. We'll be diving into the plot now. So you open up season two, and again they've arrested David Tate, so he's going to prison. Uh, Marco's still sad about his son Goose. Um, I did watch this one a little, little sparsely at the beginning, just one episode every four or five days, I'm not sure how well I'll remember it. But they open up and there's this big drug house. And so basically, um, Daniel Fry and Adriana Mendez is, are the reporters. They go to this house, Daniel Fry is, um, you know, he gets, I don't know, he doesn't get fired in season one, but he's like coming back from the paper and just coming back for day one or something. Well, after because he got shot on the bridge in the, um, the season one. So he's recovered now in season two, but his first day back, they're working on something slow, um, and they go to this house to, you know, report on elderly uh, people, and they find, you know, $80 million in this dead woman's house. And so the big kind of plot development is, it's really through the whole movie, is just trying to catch Fausto uh, Galvan. Again, there was another, like, um, kind of cartel leader type woman in season one who gets killed. But really, it's just, it's just trying to track fast. I'll go Fausto Galvan, as well as once the uh, they find this big money, you have this character, Eleanor Noct, who's like a Mennonite. She you know, dresses in a religious fashion, 
but she's she a, a money person for Fausto. And so she comes across the border with this other dude who, who is uh, working for Fausto. Um, Eleanor stabs him in the neck and he's like, he dies and he's like, the car like slips into idle and it's like circling around. And so Sonia, Marco, and um, uh, Lieutenant uh, Hank Wade go investigate that. And you really don't see why uh, Eleanor killed the guy until later because like, they're on the same cartel team. But anyway, regardless, later in the movie you find out that you know, Eleanor has, or in the show, Eleanor had been raped by her father and, you know, has really, you know, weird sex issues and stuff or something. And so the other cartel dude wanted to see Eleanor's boobies. And when he wanted to touch Eleanor's boobies, she stabbed him in the neck with a pen and he bleed, bled out. So it's a, it a minor development through the whole thing. You don't see the resolution as to what they kill. She kills him in like episode one or two. You don't see like why until like episode like 10 or 11. This is a 13 episode season. About 45 minutes each. Probably should have said that before starting the plot synopsis, but who cares? Anyway, so that happens. Um, but really, that's the development is they see this this uh, person come across, Eleanor knocked. Um, she, after that, she like strips down or is like, you know, showering, and two teenage boys see her showering, and she's not like a bad bitch or at all. At all. <laughs> but regardless, one of the dudes rides away on his bike, the other dude, you know, I don't know, they're 14, 15, you know, wants, wants to touch Eleanor's boobies. And so Eleanor's like, you know, help me get some clothes in a car and then, then, then we can have some sex. And then so he gets the, she gets clothes in a car from this like 14, 15 year old and then he wants to touch her boobies so he, she stabs him and puts him in a, in, a, in a tub to disintegrate. And then she like sneaks back in to the other dude, the other uh, kid that was with him on the bike and he doesn't want to touch her boobies so she lets him live. And then the, the police, you know, pick up uh, go to that kid and and he says the other kid is with with the butterflies and she had killed him and put him in some tub in a butterfly sanctuary that Sonya recognizes. So that's really the truly the, the main plot as well as rather trite or boring and move along well is they're really just trying to um, arrest Fausto and Sonya's got this hard on for Eleanor because she kills this kid and so they. Um, they they go to they go to Juarez and Sonia and Marco Marco's kind of on the you, you see a lot more of the Captain Robles's corruption this season so Marco's kind of on the edge of his of his team again another development at the end of season one and season two was this Stephen Linder who again is just kind of a strange character and Ava you know they were the rescuing a girl that's been raped by the police and Captain Robles is in on it and so they're doing some raid and Marco almost one of Marco's own men almost shoots him like on purpose. And so Marco in, in, in his standing in the Juarez Police Department is pretty iffy throughout the whole season. Regardless, um, they have, they go into some, they kill a prosecutor, the Fausto kills some prosecutor that's trying to go after him. I think they go to his apartment and they're like looking through it and two, two police officers come to kill Marco. Sonia's there and she's not allowed to be or supposed to be in Juarez and she ends up killing or at least shooting one of the cops and Marco's, you know, like, get out of here. Oh, you can't be here. So Sonia leaves, and as you know, she's right outside the house. Hears him execute the two people, and then Marco gets a reward for you know busting dirty cops. When from Captain Robles, who was also dirty, but they're just putting on a show for everybody. And so past that, um, Fausto, he was killing people. Um, he has he has uh, some dude called the, the Chopper kidnap, just an American kid, hitman kidnaps Sonia, takes her to the desert to kill her. Uh, Marco f figures that out somehow, rushes out to the desert, and shoots the dude um, who's digging the, the ditch to kill Sonia. So f finds and rescues Sonia. Sonia goes back, the trust between Sonia and Marco's relationship goes back and forth because Marco again has a uh, family history with Fausto, but he's legitimately just a cop, but he's also <laughs> playing the politics of the Mexican police department. And so the whole time, Adriana and Daniel Fry, they're working on the story. Um, you have a C the CIA presence again. And so the, the big thing is, again, they're trying to catch Fausto. The CIA wants Fausto to keep being facilitated to, you know, sell drugs to produce money. And the local cops and the DEA are trying to bust, bust him. And so you have a, you have a detective or a, um, a DEA Joe, couldn't see his last name, but the, the, big, the big white dude in the show. And so she starts working with Sonia. Um, and they really just started to do that for like the first eight episodes. Then the kind of next big development is um, Fausto. He's working with a business owner. Um, his name was 
um, Sebastian um, Cerioles or something. But regardless, you have, you have Fausto, Sebastian, and Eleanor, and they're just trying to figure out you know, what happened with all with all of this. Well, there's a, another banker, the the bank that they're laundering this money through. That dude blows his head off in one of the earlier seasons. But the biggest plot development is when they when the when the um, cartel people kind of like separate. And so originally you have Fausto um, as Eleanor's loyalty. That's why she's in America. But Eleanor sides with Sebastian as long as Sebastian uh, gets her father, who's being held captive. Basically, the reason you learn, the reason Eleanor's loyal to Fausto is when her father raped her. Fausto had, like locked him up, cut his balls off, or something, like locked him in a cage. So you have this, this creature who's really uh, Eleanor's father being locked up, who's kind of like this ominous thing until the very end. And so Eleanor says, you know, I'll work with Sebastian as long as you kill Fausto and get uh, get my father from him. And so that's kind of the biggest separation um, in terms of just plot development. I'm sure there's other minor stuff I'm skipping over. But regardless, they, they, they're, they're laundering money through this Red Rocks, Red Ridge uh, project development. Um, the name, the Charlotte Millwright, who again was kind of just married to this old dude in season one and inherited this drug route, so she kind of has to go along with it. And she had you know, a, a boyfriend named Ray, which again, I liked Ray's characterization and Daniel Fry's characterization with the two that I liked in this show. But they don't really have much choice. And so Ray doesn't really go, Ray doesn't get killed, but you don't really see what ever happens, so he just kind of just fades into the background on the characterizations. But regardless, you have Charlotte with, these, with this big product development in her name. Eleanor, um, Cesar, who's working on the ranch with Charlotte, is now working for Eleanor. Um, they have another dude called Jaime, Jamie in English, but he's, he's a weak character. It's just like a, it's like a mentally challenged dude that just does whatever Eleanor says, and Eleanor's already a weird character, so I don't know. A lot of characters are off for me. But regardless, they're going to this place to this Red Rocks to transfer back of the, the, the name out of Charlotte's name back into some other shell company because they're trying to sell it. The, the reason that the, the, the people broke up is because Fausto is killing a lot of people. Sebastian says it's bad for business and they want to sell the Red Rocks. And I think Fausto doesn't want to lose out on like 300 million, so he doesn't. So that's really what causes the separation. But regardless, you have a big meeting between. Um, the Charlotte, Eleanor, Cesar, um, and then uh, a couple, a couple other people, but the uh, again the DEA and the two DEA agents, DEA Joe, and there's one other one, um, and Detective Hank Wade are all at this Red Rocks place, and Fausto is just like you know it's time to go to war, kill them all. He has people watching the, the thing because now that Eleanor's betrayed him, kill them all. So you have, you have a big bloodbath. Um, DEA Joe gets killed. Um, Eleanor Eleanor lives. Cesar gets Cesar gets hit, I believe, but lives. Um, <laughs> Hank Wade gets hit, um, and they kind of like the way it happens is the the Fausto's people come in, shoot a bunch of people, and a lot of the DEA and the other the local police officers are able to kill each other, and a lot of just the Eleanor Caesar group and Sebastian's group kind of just like either ducks gets hit a little bit or you know just gets out of the way while they everyone takes each other out and so that's kind of like the biggest development there um and then from there uh detective hank wade gets um eleanor's ledger which i guess has all you know all the addresses and all the cartel doings and it's like the big thing they need to get back and so uh hank wade does get hit in that in, in that exchange but he obviously obviously lives and it high, ends up hiding the ledger before people come to find him, because they're not at this point. They're not sure who to trust. Again, there's a CIA dude has a couple like flamboyant dancers killed through this other hitman, and so the local cops and the DA are not sure who to trust uh, throughout the entire thing. And so that happens. I'm um, not sure what what happens next. Oh, uh, well, Fausto is now on the run. They have Marco. Uh, kind of like enlist the, the marina, just the marines in Mexico. So uh, Faust is kind of in hiding. Uh, they go they go try to capture him. He takes he takes Marco ca or captive, yeah. He kills like the, the people Marco's going with. Marco's kind of doesn't trust the marines, but goes with them and the marines get killed. Marco gets taken captive. And then also Fausto has kidnapped uh, Sebastian's daughter who's addicted to who's addicted to heroin or dope or some sort of drugs And so they're kind of they go on the run. Um, well, basically uh, Fausto says, you know, like let me have a safe passage 
and the, the Marines are like, yeah, sure. And so he sends down one of their own dudes in the car, and like the, has a Marine drive the car back to them, and the Marines just mow down their own dude, and Fausto's not in the car. And so Fausto, his main right-hand man, um, uh, Sebastian's daughter and Marco are walking through the Mexican desert to get to another truck. Um, the, the, the daughter basically was like, you know, I can't walk anymore, I need some drugs. And so Fausto goes to give her some drugs and she like stabs Fausto in the neck with the heroin. And um, uh, Marco is able to, to shoot the other dude and to, or I don't know if to shoot him, but I think the only one that gets shot in that exchange is the daughter. But basically the power changes where Marco is now able to handcuff Fausto, his right hand man. And um, the daughter is now injured, but they, they're now in control. And so they get to this truck, it doesn't work, he calls Sonia, Sonia picks him up, Sonia drives uh, Sebastian's daughter to the hospital without telling anybody who she is, and Marco turns in Fausto. So Fausto gets turned in, um, later on the, the CIA dude, he gets killed by the, the hitman that he, he's been using. Um, so there's like two CIA dude, a woman and a dude, the woman's fed up with a dude and has him killed by his own hitman, so he dies. And then Adriana Mendez and Daniel Fry get to write up this big story uh, of the breakout. And they, you know, they work on it the whole season, and they, there's a lot of subplots with them. But I'm just getting through the major stuff. And then, basically after that, so Fausto's turned in. Marco gets offered, promoted to uh, the captain's chair, Captain Robles. He shoots Stephen Linder. Stephen Linder tries to attack him. Stephen Linder lives. Um, and Captain Robles gets approached by another prosecutor. And there's one prosecutor throughout the season that does get killed by Fausto. But Captain Robles gets, um, gets arrested or arraigned for the corruption and all the other charges or whatever. And uh, Stephen, Linder, and Ava have a relationship now. So Stephen wants to get back at Robles again for facilitating the rape. And so that's what happens there. And then uh, Eleanor Knott and Cesar... Uh, have her father and she's taking she takes her father to the tree where she first raped him and, you know, he's got real long fingernails you know he's been held in a cage for a while and so she like he's like chained up like breaks free starts to attack Eleanor and then Sonia's on the scene by then and so Sonia kills her, Eleanor's father and then also arrests Eleanor and turns her in and so they get the they get the bad guys in the end so again nothing nothing super novel or unique Good guys get the bad guys, and all the good guys really die. Nothing super unique in the writing. After da David Tate gets killed midway through the season, um, but I liked his characterization in the first season, but after that it was just you know your standard cartel, enforcers, law enforcement, corruption, CIA, DIA, DEA, who's selling drugs. And so those similar movies or, ma or shows or major themes, it's extremely redundant in season two for me. So... But oh, Charlotte Miller, she's she's dead in a big exchange, and that's why I said once she dies, you don't you don't hear anything from Ray, and he's not at the meeting. And so I'm sure I missed some things, but 13 episodes, season 45 minutes, and I didn't watch it super like continuously. So overall, it just didn't do much for me, and this was the final season of the show. So I'll probably pick it up almost. I just want to, I will certainly watch Snowfall. I just want the whole season to be out before I start watching it. So I'll certainly watch that. I might watch the American season too. Might go back to movies. Just keep putting out as much content as I can. Again, as I have no constitutional rights, and my life is fucking destroyed. So thank you for watching my review of The Bridge Season 2, and I'll see you on the next one.